so we can continue to work together to make the world a safer place. And today, on the 40th anniversary of the Hezbollah bombings in the, at the U United States Embassy in Beirut, Lebanon, I am pleased to announce a nine-count a, a nine indictment involving Hezbollah associate Nazim Ahmad, his family members, and his associates that includes conspiracy to defraud the United States, conspiracy to violate the International Emergency Economic Powers Act through diamond transactions and acquisitions of artwork in violation of the global terrorism sanctions regulations, money laundering, money laundering conspiracy, and other crimes. The indictment also includes forfeiture allegations related to hundreds of diamonds in more than 100 works of art. This case is just one example of the hard work that HSI special agents put in every day and how HSI investigates and helps prosecute a wide range of crimes. Because of HSI's unparalleled investigative capabilities and strong partnerships, we are uniquely positioned to bring international criminals to justice. This multi-year investigation was extremely broad in scope, spanning several continents where aspects of the crimes covered in the indictments were carried out. HSI's investigation revealed that members of the Ahmed criminal organization are allegedly involved in a complex, illicit scheme using layers of individuals and corporate entities to acquire and sell valuable goods, such as diamonds and artwork, and to engage in criminal financial transactions. According to the allegations made public today, the Ahmed criminal organization used its complex structure to defraud the U.S. and foreign governments, evade U.S. sanctions, violate custom laws, and launder money. This indictment also reveals that Nazim Ahmed was associated with high-level members of Hezbollah, many of whom are sanctioned by OFAC for facilitating terrorism through Hezbollah. The U.S. Department of Treasury sanctioned Ahmed for his support and services to Hezbollah in December 2019. Following those sanctions, Ahmed's money laundering organizations continue to pass money and goods through multiple individuals and corporate entities to obscure his role in criminal financial activities. Since then, Ahmed's controlled entities imported and exported more than $400 million in goods to and from the United States. Earlier today, the London Metropolitan Police arrested another suspect involved in the Ahmed money laundering organization in response to a provisional arrest request made under the extradition, extradition treaty. In an independent action, the Department of Treasury also is announcing sanctions against approximately 60 people and businesses involved with the organization. HSI continues to work to dismantle the Ahmed money laundering organization by leveraging its unique capabilities and legal authorities here and abroad. We'll continue to work with our domestic and foreign law enforcement partners to prosecute members of the Ahmed criminal organization and deny them access to legitimate markets. We anticipate sharing with more than 40 countries to help dismantle this organization over the next several months. HSI is one of the largest international footprints in U.S. law enforcement and will continue to use its force for good on the global stage. With that, I'll turn it over to Dep Deputy Secretary Tia. Thanks very much, Tay. We really appreciate your service to the nation, Dir Director Johnson. Thank you for joining us today, and while I will have to depart uh, after my remarks, I am very glad I am able to join you all to announce these important actions. Acting Director Johnson mentioned the bombing of the U.S. Embassy in Beirut that occurred 40 years ago today, and I want to take a moment to reflect on that. On the afternoon of April 18, 1983, 63 people were killed, 
and more than 100 were injured after a pickup truck full of 2,000 pounds of TNT was detonated next to the U.S. Embassy in Beirut. The act was linked to a terrorist organization now known as Hezbollah. The bombing ripped through and nearly destroyed the embassy. It was a cowardly act of terrorism and tragically a prelude of future terrorist-driven violence that would occur later that year, also linked to Hezbollah. When 241 U.S. military personnel were killed after a truck loaded with explosives was driven into the U.S. Marine barracks in Beirut in October of 1983. Today, we honor the memory of all who were lost in those attacks 40 years ago. Now, for myself, as a retired U.S. Army combat arms officer with three combat tours in the Middle East and someone who was a West Point cadet in 1983, I take pride in helping lead a department where veterans make up a quarter of our workforce. Secretary Mayorkas and I often note that Homeland Security is a great way for veterans to continue their mission of service to the nation, to once again raise their right hands to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Built in the aftermath of 9-11 and born of both tragedy and necessity, the Department of Homeland Security has had a counterterrorism mission from day one. On days like today, we are reminded of what that means and recommitted to fulfilling the solemn promise at the very core of our department's mission, to never forget. The United States not only remains committed to attacking and taking down terrorist networks, including their sources of financing, the workforce at our department and across the government, as you can see today, works every single day to live up to that commitment. Now to build on what Acting Director Johnson just shared, Nassim Ahmed and his network use a complex web of unlawful business entities to buy valuable artwork and secure U.S.-based diamond grading services, all while hiding their involvement in and benefit from these activities to the tune of approximately $160 million, while also providing the terrorist organization Hezbollah access to U.S. and international financial markets. The international actions we are announcing today against Nazim Ahmed for his involvement with the terrorist organization, again Hezbollah, should serve as a reminder that the U.S. government and our allies will tirelessly prosecute those who are sanctioned for illicitly financing terrorist activities. I am very proud to be able to be here today to not only share the results of this investigation into the Ahmed criminal organization, but also talk about the outstanding international and interagency collaboration that led to this moment. We are very grateful to our strong ally, the United Kingdom, for their partnership in this effort. I want to personally thank Ambassador Karen Pierce from the United Kingdom for her leadership on the U.S.-U.K. law enforcement cooperation. The U.K.'s role in this case was integral in successfully dismantling this criminal organization. This multi-year investigation represents a whole-of-government effort spanning across the Department of Commerce, the Department of Treasury, the Department of State, and obviously the Department of Homeland Security and so many others. For DHS, many organizations played an important role. Director Johnson mentioned one of them, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, and with an ICE Homeland Security investigation, several teams were involved, in particular Cedar Rapids leading the way, and in New York, and in particular, the Cultural Property Art and Antiquities Program and Trade Transparency Unit, and HSI teams in Chicago, Dallas, Houston, Kansas City, Los Angeles, Raleigh, St. Paul, and Santa Rosa. And overseas, the HSI attache offices in Africa, Asia, Europe, and the Middle East also played critical roles in this investigation. As Director Tay Johnson just shared, HSI was a central part of this operation's success. And I want to quickly highlight HSI's unique authorities and capabilities. HSI is the Department of Homeland Security's principal investigative arm, responsible for investigating transnational crime and threats. With around 6,000 special agents deployed across 237 cities in the United States and in 56 countries across the world, HSI is clearly doing its part to safeguard the American people, our homeland, and our values. We are grateful for all of our partners for their unwavering commitment and cooperation in dismantling illicit financial networks, 
supporting terrorism, and helping prevent future atrocities. The interagency efforts that led to today's announcement speak to this administration's whole of government approach to combating transnational criminal organizations and terrorist organizations. To those who continue to undermine international laws and others who would seek to, let this serve as an ongoing reminder that we will continue to utilize every tool at our disposal to identify and dismantle illicit networks profiting from financial crimes, particularly those supporting terrorism. Thank you, and I now will turn to our colleague from the Department of Commerce, Deputy Director Dan Clutch. Thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you to uh, Deputy Secretary Tien, and uh, thank you to ICE Director Tay Johnson for the invitation to speak to this group today. I also want to give a special thanks to Acting Executive Associate Director for Homeland Security Investigations, Steve Francis, for his long-term partnership with the Department of Commerce, Bureau of Industry and Security. On behalf of Assistant Secretary for Export Enforcement, Matt Axelrod, who could not make it today, the funding of foreign terrorist organizations like Hezbollah is illegal, regardless of whether the funding comes in the form of cash or the export of high-priced diamonds and art. We're proud to partner with DOJ, DHS, and all other law enforcement partners domestically and abroad to bring this significant enforcement action today. This is really an incredible case and one that shows the value of the global law enforcement community collaborating to disrupt and dismantle a terrorism financing network. I also want to recognize the hard work of our Office of Export Enforcement New York Field Office, the Special Agent in Charge Jonathan Carson, for his leadership and his team's efforts in support of this investigation. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I wanted to thank Department of Homeland Security, uh, Deputy Secretary Chen, Director Johnson for inviting Treasury to be here to speak with you today. Uh, my name is Greg Janis. I'm the Associate Director for uh, the Office of Foreign Assets Controls, um, Office of Global Targeting. I oversee um, global targeting san for sanctions. Um, today, in conjunction with the actions that have been announced today, um, I'm pleased to announce that OFAC has sanctioned a global network that is engaged in the sophisticated forms of money laundering and attempted sanctions evasion to benefit Hezbollah and a key financier, Nassim Saeed Ahmad, who OFAC sanctioned in 2019 as a specially designated global terrorist. Our sanctions target today a total of 52 individuals and entities spanning Lebanon, the United uh, Arab Emirates, South Africa, Hong Kong, Angola, Cote d'Ivoire, and other countries. This network, which Ahmed is providing material support to Hezbollah, involves his son, his daughter, and other family members and associates worldwide. It facilitated the payments and shipments and delivery of cash, diamonds, and precious gems, and artwork, not only for the benefit of Hezbollah, but for its financier. The network assisted Nazim Saeed Ahmad in evading US sanctions to maintain his ability to finance Hezbollah and his lavish lifestyle, while even the people of Lebanon increasingly struggle to meet their, be their basic needs. Our actions today aim to disrupt a very complex and coordinated effort to hide and move resources. Let me give you three examples. First, the network utilized both legal and illegal arrangements to coerce both witting and unwitting participants into falsely engineering certificates which are required under law to manipulate diamond prices and taxes and give their business the veneer of legitimacy. The network used shell companies and fraudulent schemes to disguise Ahmad's role in financial transactions, which enabled him to purchase and co-sign for high-value artwork and luxury goods from auction houses and galleries worldwide. Finally, the network undervalued invoices for imported goods and cleared bulk items such as artwork shipments through seaports 
uh, leveraged Hezbollah's influence at these ports for, for port of entry for these assets and into Lebanon without paying the due taxes re required. The intent of sanctions, U.S. sanctions, is to protect the foreign policy, national security, and economy of the United States, and today's action does just that. Overall, our action sends a clear message to the art and other luxury good participants who should uh, be attentive to the culture of privacy, but also to raise their awareness about the value of artwork and luxury goods and how they could be diverted to for illicit purposes, including terrorism financing. As a result of the Treasury sanctions today, unless otherwise authorized, all property and interests in property of these persons, including artwork that are in or come into the United States or into the possession of the, of the U.S. persons, are blocked and must be reported to OFAC. Thank you very much. Good afternoon and thank you all for coming. My name is Paul Houston and I am the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Threat Investigations and Analysis in the U.S. Department of State. I oversee the Department's Reward for Justice program. Today I'm here to highlight a standing $10 million reward offer for information leading to the disruption of financial mechanisms of Hezbollah. Specific to this offer, we are seeking information on the financial network of Nazin Ahmed, a prominent Hezbollah money launderer, financier, diamond dealer, and art collector. Hezbollah relies on financing and facilitation networks of those at Nazim's to sustain operations and launch attacks globally. It earns almost $1 billion annually through direct financial support from Iran, international businesses and investments, donor networks, corruption, and money laundering activities. Until Hezbollah ceases to use terrorism and violence to achieve its goals, the United States will aggressively target the group, terrorism, their terrorism leadership, its infrastructure, and financial support networks. Today, I'd also like to announce a new reward offer for information about Hezbollah leader Ibrahim Akil, also known as Tassin, Akil serves on Hezbollah's highest military body, the Jihad Council. During the 1980s, Akil was principal member of Hezbollah's terrorist cell known as the Islamic Jihad Organization, which claimed responsibility for the bombings of the U.S. Embassy in Beirut in April of 1983, and also the U.S. Marine Corps barracks in October of 1983. The 1983 bombings, which occurred 40 years ago today, killed 63 individuals. And in October 1983 at the Marine Corps barracks, the bombing killed 241 U.S. personnel. The Rewards for Justice program is offering up to $7 million for information leading to the identification, location, arrest, and or conviction in any country of Ibrahim Akil. Additional information on this reward offer, you can contact rewardsforjustice.net. Let me end by saying, our multi-agency partnership fully demonstrates that the United States is committed to disrupting Hezbollah financial networks. We have not forgotten the atrocities that occurred to our personnel 40 years ago today in honor of those who lost their lives in these acts, those who brought harm to our country and citizens will be brought to justice. Thank you.
Hi there, um, Luke Barr with ABC. Is there anything that you can say about um, any direct plots or actions that some of the finances were, were used for? Um, anything you can say about that or, or maybe just in general um, how these finances were, were, were used? Thank you. Maybe Joyce, should I hold it? Oh, thank you. Hi, um, this is Michelle Hackman with the Wall Street Journal. Could you speak to the broader context here of um, U.S. sanctions? I know you guys have been doing also a lot of cases against Russian oligarchs who are already sanctioned by the U.S. I mean, are you seeing more criminals being able to evade U.S. sanctions through these sort of shell companies? Are you getting better at tracking them down? Or, you know, are they proliferating? Could, could you sort of talk about this broader context? Thanks. Thank you very much. Very good question. Uh, very relevant question. Um, broadly, uh, yes. Um, I have to say, over the last seven or eight years, giving you the broad context, um, Sanctions um, and particularly the targets of sanctions that we go after have have changed dramatically. They have become more sophisticated, more powerful, more politically connected. Uh, consequently, the the um, the effects of sanctions have also um, increased as well, which we need to be careful of. And but also, what has happened over time is that these targets have become far more sophisticated than we've ever seen. So. Um, Yes, we are adapt. They're adapting to sanctions. They are learning the laws of sanctions uh, because the fact that many of our targets are well financed. Uh, there, many of them can be surrounded with uh, very good lawyers who understand U.S. sanctions uh, and law, uh, and consequently, um, we have we are targeting them in greater numbers. Um, and prioritizing them and also learning how they are adapting to our sanctions. So yes, um, evasion is becoming a greater uh, priority for the Treasury Department, particularly uh, across terrorism finance as we're looking at here, but also particularly with Russia uh, that we've seen. So um, the evasion of sanctions is, is, uh, is, a, is a very high priority right now for us. Um, I'll stop right there, um, and thank you for that question. Any virtual questions? All right, thank you everybody for joining us today.